Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy Crooks209 back at you guys with another video. This video is going to be the first of a series that I like to call Road to the Top 50 Using Only 4 Star Fighters. Uh, this is a series that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I just haven't really had the resources to do it, but now I do. So I'm going to go ahead and crank, crank a series out for you guys, showing you that you can get to the top 50 using only 4 Star Fighters. Uh, and there's a little bit of a stipulation on it. So, uh, this series is going to be only four star fighters, but depending on the weight class, uh, fighters cannot be used more than once in an hour. So what that means is if, uh, if I get featherweight and lightweight, I cannot use the same four star fighter every single time. I can only use him once. So if I get, uh, repeated fights in featherweight, I can only use Cub Swanson once. Uh, then I have to switch to Calvin Cater, and I can't use Calvin Cater, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's just really going to give you guys a chance to see that you can use all of these fighters and still win. Uh, you don't have to choose the same fighter in ranked championships every single time, and that you can use them and be, be a good player and still reach the top 50. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Yo, what's good guys? So as you can see, we made a brand new account called Halfway Crooks 209. Um, it, we just got done with the placement fights. Um, I actually tried to start recording this video yesterday, but uh, the file got corrupted. So we had to do a whole new video. That's why you see I have I already have 10 fights. Uh, but as you can see, we need 2,088 points to get into the top 50, which is doable. Uh, it's not terrible. Uh, but we're starting off in Division 9. And the two weight classes that we're starting off in is welterweight and middleweight. These weight classes have some really good level four fighters. Um, I know you guys primarily are used to seeing, you know, the Robert Whitakers in middleweight. Um, the Israel Adesanya's, the Jacare's, and the Kamzats. You know, those are about the the five fighters, four fighters you see. Uh, you see some Yoel Romero's. But as you can see, we're going to go ahead and pick Michael the Count Bisping against this created fighter. Michael Bisping has really good striking, uh, really good has a really good striking game. Uh, has the switch kick to the body, a really good one two. Has really good boxing combinations. Uh, his chin is okay. It's not the best, but it's it's still uh, really usable. He's not the Michael uh, Bisping of UFC three. You know the one that had super cardio. Uh, and that really was really hard to finish, but he's really still usable in this fight. Uh, or up in this weight class, I mean. So, all right, with that being said, we're jumping into it. So, the first thing I noticed right here is this guy is throwing jab straight. You're going to notice this throughout the entire fight. This guy just, he, he's literally just not really piecing together combinations. So, with Michael Bisping, we want to be in this pocket. But we also want to look out for that uh, that 6 to 12 elbow right there that he's doing. So we're trying to put together combinations, trying to interrupt him in the middle of these jab straights that he's throwing. And I also noticed that he, his stamina is draining down very, very low. So I know at some point I'm going to be able to catch him. So there he goes. He hits me with a beautiful uppercut. We have to retreat. Head health is low. He's, he's pressuring a little bit because his guy down there looks like a light heavyweight down here. Uh, he basically has that Israel Adesanya build on his character. The winging hooks. So I would hit him with a head kick right there. Hit him with the straight. Came back with a with a hook hook combination. And there we go with the knockdown. <clears throat> we hit him with this. Hit him with the strike right out of the clinch. Which is something that I hope eventually that they fix. So there we go, we get a beautiful four-piece combination, get a knockdown. Here we are up against the fence, put some knees in his belly, start to get him to think about the, that body health. And now we detach, immediately have to switch back to orthodox. He's Michael Bisping is not very good in southpaw. So here I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Feeling pretty comfortable right here with, the, with where we're at in the stand-up. Don't really feel too much danger. Able to slip that hook and bam, hit him with the check hook and he's down. Hit him with some ground and pound and he's out of there. First dub 
of the series is always the nicest and we get the rage quit i don't know about y'all but my favorite thing is when i beat somebody so bad that they rage quit it just there's no better feeling right no better feeling especially somebody that's using the created fighter uh, a created fighter and a spammer are by far my favorite to beat and to make rage quit because then it's just like yeah i got you i got you so so far so well we got the first dub with michael bisping which which also means for the rest of the the time that the weight class is going we can no longer use bisping uh we have to go with another fighter um so that's the way the series is going to go as well we cannot use the same fighter in the same weight class more than once um and i did this just to throw in a, a variety of fighters like it you know i I personally haven't used every single fighter in this game, but I want I want to. I want to use them in ranked. I want to see how well they stand up uh, to opponents, to online opponents. So here we are in Walter weight, and uh, this this weight class as well has some really good level four fighters, um, and so we can't use the Masu dolls, the GSPs. Uh, any of the, basically the top six or seven fighters or eight fighters. I think I might have eight fighters. And I'm going based off of who this guy is using. So I was thinking about going Robbie Lawler. But then I was I was like, oh, maybe I'll use somebody different. But as soon as I seen him lock onto that Nick Diaz pick, I was like, you know what? We we brawling it out today. There's going to be no ground game. And we're we going to uh, we go ahead and rock with Robbie. Now, this, this fight was especially challenging for me, and uh, these kind of fights are going to be challenging for me because I'm primarily an orthodox fighter. Robbie Lawler has a lot of power, but in southpaw. So I knew that was going to be a challenge for me going in. Um, I'd have to really pace myself, try not to get caught. Uh, but I've been working on southpaw in practice mode, uh, so I wasn't totally... I wasn't like completely scared of this fight, but I just knew I had to take my time and really pick my shots. Try to touch his glove. He tried to jab me. So he comes out. I can see he's trying to stand his ground, trying not to get bullied. He's popping off that jab with Nick Diaz, as as we all know Nick Diaz do, do does. He comes out and just puts that jab on you and just he pressures you until you break. And so that guy's just trying to use this strategy too. But we're staying in his face. We're letting him know. You're not just going to back us up and really be be jab heavy like that. We're going to work on his legs. We're going to interrupt him with a straight right there. I'm trying to slip off, letting him know I am going to slip your jab. His timing was was honestly kind of good, though, if I'm being real honest. Uh, he didn't overcommit on his jabs too much, so it made me readjust my timing. It's right there. He hits me with a good check hook. Here we are coming back. We're still in southpaw. We're in a good spot. Uh, we're still trying to work on his legs as well. We're trying to get him to switch stance because Nick Diaz has an 80 switch stance. Um, so if you work on his leg his, and he has to switch stance, his power is going to drop and his speed is going to drop really, really significantly. Uh, this is why you don't see me using Nick a lot in, uh, in welterweight or in middleweight. I do sometimes. But still, uh, as you can see, this guy is super jab heavy. It's, it's all about the jab, and then he's occasionally, when, when he's uh, inside the pocket, is throwing hooks. So I have to be aware of that and time my slips out well. But we're catching him. His head health is, is draining a lot faster than mine. We, we're working that leg. I didn't really want to go too much to the body, uh, just because if, if I get hit with an uppercut, uh, Robbie Lawler isn't the best. He doesn't have the best shin health. He has good uh, health stats, but there we go with the first rock. Get a nice clean knockdown on him. And now we're pressuring him. So as you can see, he's, he's slowed his output. Tries to throw off, goes to the body. So here, I know I have him. It's just a matter of time of, you know, just staying patient. I got to stay patient. Work on, work on his leg, too, as well as his head. Not just go head hunting because he's blocking. And uh, with the block meta... With the block meta now, it, it takes a lot to get through that block. So we get a beautiful rock right there with a straight lead hook. And we get a beautiful knockdown. 
I was going to this ground and pound finish. I was not able to get it. I don't know how he survived, but he did. More power to him. So you're going to see here, I get another beautiful knockdown. But then I start switching to go into the legs. Um, I have his leg health already damaged. I have his leg health already damaged. And I don't want to, I don't want to just be head hunting. Um, so in the second round, we're going to try to work on that. That's something that I wanted to implement more because if I can get, if I can get him worried about his legs and his head, then I mean, I, I've overall got him where I want him. Uh, he's not going to be playing to, to hurt me. He's going to be playing more to not get knocked out. And that's how you end up uh, getting finished, is you're more worried about what your opponent's doing to you than what you can do to your opponent. So here we go, the start of the second round. Still popping out that jab straight. We're in a really good situation. See, there we go. We start working with the calf kick. Making him whiff some strikes as well. His head health, I can see, is pretty, pretty low still. And there we go, we get a beautiful rock with another straight hook. That combination is landing every single time we plant. Uh, I overcommitted with a combination there. Good thing he didn't uh, he didn't notice. There we go. We hit him with another beautiful calf kick. We're blocking. We're slipping. We're moving our head off the line. We're not getting hit with anything uh, anything too damaging. But we're also uh, staying in his face enough to to let him know that if he messes up, we're gonna return. And there we go. We get a, that animation from that calf kick right there. And so look, he's fighting very, very defensive. He, he doesn't want to overcommit because his head health is hurt. And then he's, I'm, I'm cranking off these calf kicks to his legs. So he has no idea where I'm going to go. Standing in the pocket, ending our combinations with calf kicks. We get caught right there with a straight trying to calf kick. There we go. We get a beautiful slip, a beautiful slip, a uh, straight rock right there. His head is, is flashing, so I know he has to see that just as well as I'm, I'm seeing it. So we're going to stay going to his to his leg as well. So really, it's, it's just free picking for us right now. Where do we want to go? We want to go to the head, or do we want to go to the body? Or do we want to go to the legs? Really, it's just primarily the, uh, the head and the leg. So we're just, I'm just trying to stay patient. And there we go, we get another beautiful knockdown. I don't want to jump into uh, Nick Diaz's guard. And there we go, we end up finishing him, not with a head strike, not with a leg kick, but with four body hooks. Um, I think that happened because he tried to major lunge out of the way, or he was so concerned about his head. Yeah, it was. he was so concerned about his head. He literally just was not blocking his body. And I hit him with four hooks to the body and got a got a beautiful knockdown. Oh, he did try to major lunge. The the major lunge. So with that being with that happening, uh, once you major lunge, if you get caught with body shots, it does it increases the damage significantly. Very, very significantly. Because if you're not blocking your body and you major lunge, you're lunging straight into a hook to the body you're moving into the strike so it does way more damage so that's probably why i just got a, a flat out ko animation instead of getting just a normal knockdown but we got the dub with robbie lawler um i honestly was was really proud of myself in that fight because uh, i stayed in southpaw i didn't switch to orthodox one time and we were able to get that dub so as you can see here, we're, we're moving up in points. We're now in Division 10. We started off in Division 7. Uh, we're at 1478 points. And we're keeping it moving. We're finding fights fast, which is nice. So the first thing I noticed getting into this fight is this guy is a level 48. Um, if you look at that that number that's in his, uh, in his little display picture, that means that he's leveled up uh, to level 2. And uh, he, which means he's putting in a lot of hours playing this game. Uh, you don't get that high if you haven't put in the hours. So he's going with Israel Adesanya. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, 
who do I want to go with here? Do I go with Anderson Silva? Do I want to use Dana White? Well, I was like, you know what? Let's do Master versus Student. And we go with uh, with the Spider versus Israel. Now with this one, this one's going to be another one. Um, another Southpaw. Anderson Silva. Uh, this one made me more nervous because not only am I giving up the reach, I'm also using the Southpaw. But I know Anderson Silva, uh, even at his... Even as they have him in the game, he's a legend. He has really good stats. So we're fighting against G Vash. Uh, I fought. I have fought in this guy plenty of times on my main account to know that he can give me problems if I'm using level four fighters. So I knew this one was going to be a little bit challenging. I knew he was going to get off in the first round, uh, just off of pure pure stat ability and his gameplay. So I knew I was going to have to uh, to wade the storm a little bit. So here we are, starting off the first round in Southpaw. He's moving, tries to hit me with that overhand. Then he hits me with that spinning back body kick. It's, it's tough. It's a tough kick to uh, try to try to counter effectively on. So here we are, we're exchanging in the pocket. This is where we want to do our work at. We do not want to let Israel Adesanya uh, keep us at range. But we also don't want to be eating combinations like that either. So I try to hit him with a body kick. He blocks it. He's, he hits me with that overhand. And then he's ripping to the body. This guy is doing a really, really good job of mixing it up so far. Uh, he's not just head hunting. He's, he's going to the body as well. Whether that be with the spinning back kick. Or with, uh, with that, uh, that straight lead body hook. So I knew I had to. Uh, I knew I had to employ a different strategy because I couldn't let this guy stay at this range. Hits me with another beautiful overhand. I want to stay off that cage and not let him swarm me like that. So we struggled. We're struggling here to to really get a rhythm because he's on me with Israel. And everything that Israel is, uh, everything that Anderson is good at, Israel's better at in this game. So we gotta we gotta tap our way in, not try to get too too much damage, uh, not take too too much damage, and not not put ourselves at risk. And then we get a beautiful overhand off of that miss, and we get the knockdown. And here we are with throwing to ground and pound. We try to finish him off here, and we get it. We get the finish. All it took was that one strike. We were stay stay patient. Uh, I knew he was gonna go go in and have his moments in the first round but I knew uh, I knew at the end of the day I'd catch him with something uh, he was throwing those spinning back kicks so if I could time one and counter it it was, it was going to cause a problem so shout out to him that was my toughest fight so far with, uh, with using level 4 fighters but we were able to pull it out with that overhand that Anderson Silva has so those are, the, uh, those are the kind of fights, honestly, that as this series goes along and we rank up uh, in terms of division, we're going to get harder fights like that. Um, they're going to they're gonna become tougher. Uh, I'm not just going to be able to, to uh, throw an overhand and get the fighters out. Uh, as we run into more elite players, I understand that. I have to be more technical. But as you can see, we jumped up to Division 11. We're at 15-15 uh, points. And but now is the challenging part because we are in heavyweight and light heavyweight. And if you guys have watched me streams, have have watched my streams, you know that I am I am absolutely terrified of fighting in these two weight classes. I'm not very good in them uh, because they're slower weight classes and uh, I can't play the way that I I would like to um, as much as I as much as I would like to. Uh, these weight classes I really really struggle in so I took it as a challenge I was like okay I have to do good in these weight classes in order for me to get up to the to uh to the top 50 because I know that these are going to be thrown in uh, sometimes during these videos so uh, I was just like okay I, I gotta get through it so as you can see, where first fight is going to take place in heavyweight, 
Um, I'm waiting to see who my opponent's going to pick. And he goes and picks Andre Bishop, who I can use as well. He's a level four fighter. But I'm like, oh, I don't want to do a mirror. So I thought maybe I'll use Brock. Maybe Anthony Johnson. Then I was like, uh, I was like, no. Let's go out of the way and use a legend. Let's use Kimbo Slice. The legend himself, Mr. Kimbo Slice, the backyard brawler, the one that I grew up watching, uh, super entertaining videos. The man who helped Jorge Masvidal uh, get in, get his start into uh, into into uh, famedom. It's a. Uh, I've never used Kimbo in this weight class. I. I've never used him, so I didn't even look at his stats, which is a mistake on my part. But I know he's orthodox because I've seen him fight in on his YouTube videos. But this guy, again, is a level 73, uh, which means that he's put the time into this game. So I know he knows what he's doing. And I, I really need to be careful in this fight because he has a speed advantage on me with Andre Bishop. Um, so here we are, round one. And I know straight off the rip that Andre Bishop has the speed advantage on me. So I have to be very careful with what I do uh, with my timing because he will hit me with three shots before I even land my first. So I try to slip straight him, go to his body to get the guy thinking about it. And he almost he almost gets a rock right there throwing the jab, uh, jab straight lead up lead hook combination. So I'm trying to find my distance, trying to find where I can land in the pocket. I'm trying to let him know you're not just going to bully me with your speed. Throws that overhand right there, misses. Come back with a jab straight. Hit him with the straight right there in the pocket. But then there it is. There is that jab rear hook. Knocks me down. Right here, I'm kind of feeling the pressure, if I'm being honest with you guys. I'm feeling it. I'm like, okay, I know I'm at a big speed disadvantage here. So I need to start trying to time my slips. Uh, he knocks me down again with another lead hook. He didn't jump on me. So I realized, and I knew in my mind, if I knock him down at any point, I'm not going to jump on him. So there's a, a beautiful slip straight knockdown that we get. Throw him in the clinch, hit him with an uppercut on the out. We switch back to orthodox because I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if Kimball's good uh, in southpaw or not. So we're staying. There's another straight. We hit him to the body. And there we get a knockdown, but we're not jumping on him because he didn't jump on me. So it's, it's just mutual respect. So now we're in a good spot because we're we're back to even in head health. And uh, we have two knockdowns to two that he has. So I'm just sitting back trying to slip his strikes. I noticed that his stamina has gone down considerably, but then he gets a beautiful rock on another hook. But he wastes all of his stamina. So I know going in, if this fight goes into the second and third rounds, he's not going to have a lot of stamina. So I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. Hit him with a beautiful uppercut. Uh, I don't know if he was trying to go to the body or if he just ducked. Hit him with another slip straight. Hit him with a body uppercut and a body hook. And we get a knockdown. He came upstairs with a, with a lead hook. So now, now I'm feeling very confident. I know he can't exchange in the pocket with us anymore because his head health is low. Uh, he won't trade. So now we're just putting the pressure on him. Get him. Hit him with another lead uppercut. Get a knockdown. Now we're ripping him to the body. And there's the beautiful uppercut that ends the fight. That was one of those where the momentum just built up, built up against him. Uh, I wanted to let that... I didn't want to let the momentum slip away from me because I know how devastating Andre Bishop can be if you uh, if he gets on a roll. Um, so with Kimbo, I just had to apply the pressure while I had him hurt. I started going to his body more because I knew he was going to be blocking his head more because I, I lowered that, uh, that chin health with those slip straights pretty well. So we were able, that was one of the key ways that I got that victory was just to switch it up to going to the body. So with another dub, we moved up to 1,546 points. We're making our way up. Uh, we haven't lost a fight yet. Uh, we're jumping into the next fight. And it is going to be in 
light heavyweight. Now down here they also have some some really good level four fighters. Um, some some actually really 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 viable ones. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Anthony Johnson here. I'm not gonna wait on my opponent to to pick his his fighter. I thought he was gonna use Jan because he was sitting there for so long, but then he ends up going to the Mauler, Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm butchering Alexander's last name. Is is it Gustafsson or is it Gustafsson? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if you guys know how to pronounce his last name. I don't want to be butchering people's last names on here. But we're fighting another division level, uh, another division eleven opponent, which means since we're so similar in division points that if we win this fight, we're gonna get a lot of points. So I'm. I'm really focused on winning this one. So here we go. He immediately switches to Southpaw, which which was really curious to me because Alexander's a he's an he's a natural orthodox fighter. So we're gonna apply the pressure here with Anthony Johnson. Uh, we have the power and the speed advantage. Or no, actually the power. Uh, Alexander Gustafson has uh, he has a 96 punch power, but because of his length it seems like he's a lot slower than what he really is. So here we're mixing it up to the body. He's whiffing. We hit him with a beautiful overhand to counter that, that missed front kick that he threw. And we're working. We're trying to stay patient, trying not to get caught with something on the outside. We're, we're cranking off these calf kicks. If you can see, I'm, I'm slowly and I'm slyly mixing the calf kicks in there. Uh, he's going to be worried about my power because Anthony Johnson hits so hard. So I know that, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna use the calf kicks to to limit Gus's uh, movement, because I know Gus can move. His footwork is really, really well, is really, really good as well. Uh, I think it's like a 97 or something like that, which is really good for a heavyweight. So he's trying to respond back. We're answering in the pocket, hit him with the uppercut hook there. I don't know how I didn't get a rock, but it didn't work out that way. So we're ripping to the body. He calf kicks me. He started cranking out good calf kicks as well. Now he's back in orthodox. We hit him with another calf kick. It's a lot of jab straights coming from him right now. Go with a straight to the body. Hits me with a calf kick. I hit him with the calf kick. That gives us the leg health animation. And this is a problem because he is in orthodox. That hasn't been the leg that I've been kicking on for most of the round. Uh, I was kicking on his lead leg right now. Uh, what is his lead leg? So both of these legs are hurt. So I hit him with a beautiful, with a beautiful straight uppercut right there. Kind of got a hit reaction. Hit him with a jab straight. Get a nice rock. He blocks his body. I get a takedown just for the points. Just for the points. Uh, I, just, I wanted to uh, utilize Anthony Johnson's ground game. But at the same time, I know if I'm grappling, uh, Anthony Johnson doesn't have the best grappling stamina. So if I get in a compromising uh, situation here, I'm just gonna stand back up because I know I can, I've been doing so well on the feet. I know that I can get him on the feet. So hitting him with a little bit of ground and pound here. Not doing too much, trying not to waste all of our stamina. And then we get up. And now we have him up against the cage. That's the beautiful thing about getting up right there. Is that we have him up against the cage. Hit him with a jab. Delay that calf kick. And get it right on the, the calf itself. And then the round ends. After the first round, I felt super confident. Uh, my confidence was, was, uh, was at an all-time level because I knew... Both of his leg healths are hurt. I've been working his body. His head is uh, is going to come next because of the power. So I knew in this round I have to apply the pressure. I have to stay in his face. Hit him with another calf kick. Get him with the straight rock him. He goes, he goes with an uppercut. And good thing I wasn't ripping to the body because I would have gotten rocked. So here... Hit him with another calf kick. And we're exchanging in the pocket. He loses because of his head health. And we go back down to that calf. I want to keep working that calf because I want to immobilize him and get him just to stand in front of me so I can I can wing on him with my combinations. He switches back to southpaw. 
but that's really no worry to me because I have that leg hurt as well. He hits me with that front kick in the pocket. I need to be careful of that because uh, that'll that'll rock me if, it, if I get hit with it again. So comboing off right here, going to his body. And there's a beautiful uppercut hook, uh, lead body hook combination that we just threw. We're going back to the body. We're not discriminating here. Get a beautiful uppercut knockdown. And this is the end here. We just got to break through his block and we get it done. Ooh, that, that felt so nice to get. Anthony Johnson is so powerful. Uh, he's, a he's a real diamond in the rough if you're fighting a light heavyweight. Um, I know I've seen a lot of people using, uh, you know, you see Jan, you see John Jones, you see uh, Daniel Cormier, you see some Dominic Reyes. You really don't see a lot of people using Anthony Johnson, uh, primarily because he's he hasn't fought in the UFC in such a long time. People just tend to forget about him. But good fighter to use. Uh, we got some good points off that. And that's going to be the last fight of the video, guys. Let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, post a comment in the comment section. We're going to go and peep out the points uh, and see where we're at. We're sitting at 1,874. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Let me know what you guys thought of the video. Drop a like. Hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video of the series. Take it easy. And have a good one.